Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Hoagie Boers. Today, I just want to walk you through a handful of different scenarios you might encounter when shore fishing for striped bass. So this is a textbook jetty situation. And here, we, we got a lot going on. For, for starters, we have an onshore wind. And well, an onshore wind is uh, you know, a little bit harder to fish in because you have some casting resistance you know, into the wind. Onshore winds are ideal because it pushes the bait and pushes the fish in towards the jetty. Now jetties are good because it gives you an extension out further into the water so you have access to fishing the shallow water in close to the beach and then you know as the water gets deeper so you have the ability to fish all ranges and from pretty much any angle. Now this jetty is particularly interesting because it abuts you know a spillway from an estuary behind me where there's a herring run. So at high tide, the herring come into the estuary behind me and spawn. And um, as the tide drops, they come back out into the open water. As you can imagine, it creates a buffet line for the striped bass that sort of stage an ambush. Now this is early May. I'm not really expecting to see a whole lot of action. I do did see some herring swim by earlier, but unfortunately I also saw a seal. And when you see a seal, that is not necessarily a good sign. As cool as they are to see swimming around, um, seals can also scare stripers away. Doesn't mean you won't catch any, just not an ideal situation. Might mean you have to move. But here I am on this jetty. I have an onshore wind. I'm out from the beach. I have this little spillway. It's an outgoing tide. And again, the outgoing tide's good because it's gonna push the bait out of the estuary and into the open water and the stripers will stage sort of an ambush out in this deeper water. So I just arrived on scene. A popper is a great way to start when fishing off a jetty or pretty much any shore situation where you're trying to get the lay of the land because it's gonna call them in, it's gonna create commotion. Now it may not be the, your best lure, it's your best starting point because it's gonna create some commotion and you know, get things fired up. So what I like to do is I start close and sort of work my way out, sort of a fan shaped casting arrangement. So I start in the shallow water, I cast from back here in, and then I work my way around all the way around. I'll, I'll fan cast this pier, this jetty, you know, maybe two or three times. If I don't get a touch, I'll pick up the move that you can walk the beach, you have a lot of options. Uh, here on Cape Cod, there's just a tremendous amount of jetties and places where you can fish from shore, uh, assuming you can get access to them. And uh, so, you know, if something's not happening, I'm, you know, quick to move or I'll go back up inside in the estuary um, on the incoming tide. But, you know, we're gonna start with a fan casting. I'm gonna cast into the wind right now, tight to the beach. I'm just gonna bring this popper in. I'm just gonna continue this pattern all the way around, 180 degree span just work the popper. So that cast was very tight to the beach. It never ceases to amaze me. I've been fishing my whole life. How close, especially this time of day, um, big fish will stage in tight to the beach. And uh, so it, it's a mistake a lot of anglers make in not working that tight proximity. Of course, you want to make sure there's no anglers fishing there to cross their lines. So that one is, I'm just going to work my way around. And again, it's an onshore wind, which is ideal for fishing, but not necessarily ideal for casting. But we're here to catch fish, not have an easy time casting. I have a properly balanced rod with the right weight lure, so I can get some distance. You know, I'm fishing a popper in calm, calm, very still conditions. I'll fish a popper slower than I'm fishing it now. I'll pop it, let it sit, pop it, let it sit. So as you can see, there's a, I'm not gonna call it windy, but a stiff breeze. So in a stiff breeze, I keep that popper moving, pop, 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 pop. And that's gonna help the fish key in on the lure. Sharing some tips along the way here. I'm gonna go further out. Now I'm out in the open water. This is sort of where I'm expecting my action to happen. 
in the tight to the beach as I was just fishing earlier, that gets better and better later and later into the evening. So that's a, you know, primarily an after dark technique, but I always follow the textbook, go around, just pop from this floor. Now, I'm fishing with a nine foot surf rod right here. Um, this technique works in any of the three size outfits that I was just showcasing a minute ago. But the longer the rod, the better the distance you're gonna get when you're casting. And I'm, I doubt you can tell on the camera here, but I'm getting this plug way out. This is the large size hoagie popper. And again, I'm fishing this a little faster than I would if it was flat calm water. I'm creating commotion, just working this lure, popping it, popping it, popping it. In still water, if I pause, it's easier for the fish to key in on, key in on it and find it, but less so in this stiffer breeze. I'm just gonna work the plug, pop, 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 pop. Now, for sake of the clinic, I'm just gonna bring this in, and I'm gonna continue my fan cast. Now, the casts are gonna get easier because I have the wind coming at me and my distance is going to get a little greater. I'm noticing a slick in the water here. I always pay attention as much as I can. I look for birds, I look for slicks, cormorant, bait, different kinds of bait. Here we can see a slick out in front of me and it's May here on the south side of Cape Cod. So that tells me that there's herring nearby and hopefully striped bass. So we noticed a ton of little bait sort of milling around at our feet. We saw lots of little pops on the surface. And one thing I know is we weren't catching fish on my big noisy popper, so I decided to downsize to the smallest thing I have, which is an ounce and a quarter epoxy jig. And this very closely replicates the bait that I'm seeing swimming around at my feet. And uh, you know, this lure is just heavy enough to cast with my surf rod. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps as I was doing before, my fan casting, working around. We have other anglers with us today, so you wanna be very courteous about where your fellow anglers are casting. So I'm sort of gonna keep my fan casting in this 90 degree span so I don't crowd his space over there. And so shore fishing is, uh, I like to call it a team sport. So you wanna really work with your neighbors, make sure you're not crossing their lines or doing anything that may disrupt their fishing. You know, and hopefully they'll return the same courtesy. So we switch to the epoxy jig. We're gonna do the same fa fan casting. We're gonna see if we can crack the code, see what's jumping. So to work an epoxy jig, there's really no wrong way to do it. It's more about cracking the coat in terms of finding what the fish want. They're keeled properly, so you can just cast and reel. And um, that's how a few of the hits I've had and a couple of the fish I've had so far are just on a steady reel. Sometimes they want it faster, and you can raise the tip of your rod and then give it some short twitches. And that's gonna cause the bait to skip and have that fleeing bait sort of effect. Now that's a particularly popular technique for albie fishing. And you'll see a lot of sure albie anglers fishing with their tips up high and fishing very fast, again, to simulate that fleeing bait. You know, they'll be up high and skipping it. That's the advantage of the epoxy jig. You know, a similarly, you couldn't do this with a similarly sized lead jig, say. So I'm just gonna have my tip up and that bait's just sort of skipping over the surface. Sort of the opposite of that is slow and low. Those baits are keeled just in a way where they're gonna wobble through the water and let it sink. And then the medium approach is sort of twitching your rod, making a dance and dart as you reel. So to recap, you've got the skippy retrieve with your tip up high and a fast retrieve with lots of short motions, again, to make that bait skip on the surface. So this is the skippy retrieve. Up, twit, almost like you're fishing a popper. The opposite of that is slow and low with a steady reel retrieve. Now it's gonna cause that bait to wobble. Maybe you wanna let it sink to get down deeper. And that's a slow and low, steady retrieve. And then the sort of the midway is medium speed with a little bit of rod tip action to get that bait to dance and dart. There we go. I got one. Striper too. 
So this is what was popping on all that little bait we saw swimming around. You know, we saw little pops. Wasn't sure if this was a herring. So this is what was popping off the little bait. I wasn't sure if it was herring getting excited, hickory shad, which can be around this time of year, or what. But I noticed a lot of little baits. That's why we switched over again. That's why we switched over from the popper, to the small epoxy jig, and well, we cracked the code. May not be the biggest fish of the season, at least hopefully not, but this is a brand new fish. He's got sea lice on. That means he's had some open water traveling in his recent history. A uh, very aggressive fish. I can't believe how hard he hit. We'll let this one go and get back at it. So here I have my three outfits that I take shore fishing. Now, like everything fishing, I take a very simplified approach. Uh, two of my lighter rods serve double duty as both boat rods and shore rods. And then lastly, I have a longer, you know, heavy duty surf rod. Let's start with my lighter outfit. Here, this is a medium action, seven foot spinning rod. And I have 5,000 class reels on all these outfits. And they can range in size, but I keep it simple. Same size reel for all my striper surf rods. But again, this is my seven foot outfit. And this light tackle outfit I use for casting smaller lures, smaller saw baits, epoxy jigs. This is the outfit I'll use in an estuary setting or very light tackle early in the morning when there's no wind, just messing around the beach, just in a, maybe a pair of boots, you know, fishing from a shore. And uh, so it's a very handy little outfit to have. Again, light tackle, estuary setting, backwaters. This is the same outfit I'll use for small stripers on the boat, albies. So this, you'll get a lot of action on a seven foot rod, medium action. I have 30 pound test braid. Um, I typically have either a 30, 20 or 30 pound test floral leader. Now the second outfit I have here is a seven and a half foot medium heavy action rod. Now um, this is, I'll call this the medium duty open beach outfit. I'll use the same rod on the boat when throwing larger heavy plugs. This particular rod, you know, cast comfortably up until, you know, up, upwards of two ounces. I, this rod feels happiest at an ounce and a half, ounce and three quarters. Now this outfit will give you a little more distance the ability to throw heavier lures, heavier plugs, some heavier metals. Now, lastly, you now this is you know truly a surf fishing rod. This is a nine-foot outfit. Now, this is this outfit will throw plugs starting at one ounce, but you can go all the way to four ounces with this outfit. This is the rod you want when you want super long range. Um, you know, casting heavier minnows, you know, <clears throat> heavier jigs, heavier plugs. You know, long distance. This is what I would call more of a hardcore surf outfit. Uh, you can chunk bait with this rod if you want, but it's just a, um, this is truly a heavy duty surf outfit. And um, now with these three outfits, a seven foot, seven and a half to eight foot, and a nine foot outfit, I can encounter just about any surf fishing situation for striped bass that you could imagine.